This video tutorial will look at the investment appraisal technique of net present value. So let's start by looking at an example. Now you may have seen this often in the newspapers and magazines, but someone's won a competition and it's for quite a sizable lump sum of money. Now I've got several options of how they could actually have this money given to them. The first option is to take £100,000 as a tax-free lump sum today. So the whole allowance of money up front. The second option is to maybe break this into five equal instalments of £20,000, starting with the first one today and then every year moving forward. Option C is to actually have a slightly larger sum of money, £125,000, tax-free as one lump sum in five years' time, so nothing until year five. So which option would you take? Well, the canny amongst you may have spotted the bank interest rates are set at 10% on our newspaper headlines. Now this is quite important because we're going to assume that we're going to take our money and put it into the bank. Bearing that in mind, option A would actually be the best option. Now I'm going to show you this from two different perspectives. First of all, let's consider the future value of our money in five years' time. So option C, we talked about taking £125,000 five years down the road. So in five years' time, what is that worth? Well, we'll have had nothing until that point. In five years' time, we'll get our cheque, £125,000, so that's its future value. Now, option B was slightly different. We said we take £20,000 a year each year until we've actually amassed £100,000, so five instalments. So what would happen, and we're assuming our money's going straight into the bank here. So today, we'd have our first instalment of £20,000. We'll take it down to the bank. The bank manager will probably take a holiday and be very happy with us. We put it in, and we sit on it. Now, one year from now, we'll have earned 10% interest on that. So our £20,000, 10% of that as interest would be 2000 on top. We'd also get our second instalment of 20000 So adding that together, we'd have had 20, we'd have had interest of 2, and our second instalment of 20, so we'd have £42,000 in our bank account. At the end of year 2, it's now increased. Now we've got compound interest happening here. At the end of year one, we actually had £42,000, so our 10% interest is based on that, not the 20. So we'd actually get interest of 4200 our third instalment of 20000 and of course all on top of the initial 42000 giving us a bank account balance of 66200 Year three continues in the same vein, as does year four, and finally we get to year five. Now, year five, we don't have our first instalment of 20,000, but we have earned interest of 12,210 pounds and 20 pence from the 122,102 pounds that we had at the end of year four. So our total at the end of five years is 134,312 pounds and 20 pence. So that's why that's a better financial option than option C, the 125,000 in five years time. Even though it's £25,000 better, or larger, as a return, we've not taken into account we could put this money in the bank and earn on it that way. Now, the best option is actually option A. So, taking £100,000 today, what happens? Well, it's one lump sum, we don't get any further instalments, but our interest, straight from the off, is much higher. Our interest on our first year is £10,000, that's 10% 10 of £100,000, so at the end of one year, we'd have £110,000 in our bank. At the end of year two, again, compound interest, we'd have 10% of the 110 at the end of year one, which is 11,000, which gives 121,000, and so it continues. And by the time we get to year five, at the end of year four, we had £146,410, so 10% of that is 14641 Our total at the end of five years is £161,051. Now that is significantly higher than both the other options. Well that's the future value. What we want to look at in our exam is the net present value. So what is the net present value? Well this looks at the value today. Rather than our example looking five years in the future, we think about actually how much money we'd have today instead. So taking off that interest that we could have accrued over that time. And also the opportunity cost. We could have been working that money in a business context uh, long before so rather than waiting for five years and sitting on it, we could have been using it. Quantitatively, we'll find out that any present net present value uh, of a project which is greater than zero is financially beneficial. Anything below zero 
we may as well have just left the money in the bank sitting there doing nothing if you like it's a safer risk free uh, opportunity and actually revert more money to give you an example of how this can be negative if I lent a friend £10 and let's say our bank, bank interest rates are at 10% if they were to pay me back in one year's time that £10 well I've actually lost out even though I get my £10 back so it pays back if you like and I've broken even if I had put that £10 in the bank instead 10% interest would have been an additional pound, I would have had 11. So I'm actually minus 1 as a net present value in terms of pounds. So that's how it can be negative. If actually our final outcome, we would have been better just leaving the money in the bank at a given interest. What might you need to do in the exam? We might to compare outcomes to alternative options. So you might have two different projects, two different strategies a business could look at. And you might be asked to say which one financially is better. The net present value, obviously looking for the one with the highest uh, net present value at the end, and certainly above zero. If both are below, then probably neither is the best strategy. You could also compare it to targets. So you might want to think about what a company wants to achieve. Uh, it might have in the text that any project must have a net present value of £25 million, in which case by doing the calculation you can then compare to that and the greater the margin over that or under it would be how significant uh, that result would be. So so far we talked about the future value in terms of my example. So we said that our money was worth more in the future. So 125,000 was worth 125,000 in five years. My 100,000 was worth over 160. Well that's the net future value. To work out the net present value, we actually need to discount or reduce those future sums to represent what would be the equivalent today. And we do this using discount rates. Now the table in front of you probably is quite confusing. Don't worry, you don't have to remember it for an exam. You'll be given any information that you need. The exam board might decide to give you two or three discount rates and it'll be your job to find out somewhere in the text which rate you should be using and it'll often be referred to by a finance director what they expect the banks to be offering. You'll notice that the numbers here all vary and moving from the top left down to the bottom right that the numbers themselves, the decimals, actually get smaller. This represents essentially the penalty and the smaller the number the higher the penalty for the money flow that you'll receive. Now if we look at the period of one year and one percent you'll see that the decimal we're given, the multiplying factor, is 0 0.990. Well this represents that if we had a pound um, and we put it in the bank that would be great and we'd earn interest. However at the end of one year um, had we not put it in the bank comparatively it would have lost 1% uh, compared to what we would have had. So it would only be worth 99% of its value. Equally if we go along to 10% and we go to the five year period if we had a pound Compared to putting it in the bank where it would maintain its value in terms of buying power and growth, it would actually reduce only 62% of that initial sum had we not put it in the bank. So the discount rates will actually penalise us for not putting money in the bank sooner and equally for the higher discount rate which is actually available to us. You would find for our 0 0.990, one year 1%, if I took 99p and put it in the bank for one year at 1%, I would have a pound. Equally, if I took the 0.621, which is the 10% five-year uh, value, and put that in the bank for five years at 10%, my 62 pence, if you like, would grow to pound after five years. So it's showing us what the value would be today, uh, and also, to some degree, thinking about how significant we're being discounted. In our example, we looked at the £125,000 and said that's probably the worst decision we could take in terms of our competition winner. So how does that work out as a net present value? Well, if you look at the figures on the screen, I'll show you. So our net present value of 125,000, we would actually multiply that value by the discount factor uh, looking at the table. So we're looking at the discount factor of 10%, discount rate 10%, and the period of five years. So 125,000 times 0 0.621 means that essentially 125,000 pounds in five years time would be the same as 77,000 £615 put into the bank for five years at 10%, it would then grow into 125000 with compound interest. So again, you can see quite comfortably, having £100,000 today is the best part of £22,500 better. So how's it looking in an exam? 
Well, let's get back to Big Business PLC, the example I've used for uh, payback and for average rate of return. And you'll notice in the little purple box at the side, I've put our discount rates we're using. So we're going to stick at 10%. So we've got our initial cost of this particular investment for £750,000. Then our cash inflows for five years, as well as the cash outflow, which is £7,500 each year. So how have we laid this out? Again, this is good structure for an exam. Make sure you show you're working. Uh, if you make an error, you'll still be able to pick up some of the marks. So year zero, so it's initially we're going to pay out our £750,000. There's no uh, issue in terms of interest because it's immediate. We haven't got to wait for a year to earn 10% uh, interest. So our discount factor is actually 1. So essentially it's unchanged. So we take our net cash flow, multiply by 1, and that gives our net present value of, again, £750,000 as that cash outflow. At year one, our net cash flow was £142,500. So this time we're going to multiply it by our discount factor, which is 0 0.909. In this case, it's three decimal places. You may be given two in an exam. Make sure you don't round these. So what happens? 142,500 times 0 0.909. Our net present value of that sum is 129,532 pounds and 50 pence. So what that's telling us is that 129,532 pounds and 50 pence would be exactly the same if we had that money today as receiving the 142,500 in one year's time. In fact, if we take the money and place it in a bank at 10%, the interest we would earn would mean that we would have 142,500 at the end of one year. So they are the same sums essentially. We do the same for year two. You'll notice the discount factor is now becoming smaller. What that means is we're penalizing that cash flow the longer and the further away we have to wait for it. This time 192,500, multiplied by 0 0.826, becomes 159,005. Again, with compound interest, if I put that in the bank for two years at 10%, that would be exactly the same as having £159,005 per day, as having £192,500 in two years' time. And so it continues. By the time we get to year five, we end up with the table that looks a little bit like this. Now, on our net cash flow, so not considering net present value, but the actual profit uh, we'll have at the end, uh, would be 382,500. That is the sum we would expect to receive. However, we could have put it in the bank at 10% and grown that 750,000 pounds instead. Our net present value therefore shows us the relative difference that we would have made with that. So the figure circled on the right is 82,265 pounds. Again, that's just the totals of the cash outflow in year zero and then adding on all the cash inflows we'd be expecting. So, what does that mean? Well, if I took three quarters of a million pounds, as is our example, 750,000, and placed it in the bank at 10%, I would actually earn 82,265 pounds less. So this project has got a net present value of 82,265 pounds. I'll be better off by that sum. Always good at the bottom of the page to make a little statement to explain this, certainly if you've got lots of numbers on your page. So our net present value is 82,265 pounds. In this case, there, as it is above zero, our investment is worth taking. So what's the net present value of the other options I gave you earlier? Well, as we've already discussed, net present value of 125,000 five years' time, at 10%, is 77,615 pounds. There was also 17 pence there. Second place was having our five annual instalments of 20,000. That's the same as starting off with £83,400 as one sum today. But the winner, and really the sum should be quite straightforward, is our £100,000 received today. The net present value of that is £100,000, because actually we could take that money and there's no opportunity cost. We can use it straight away. We haven't got to wait and miss out on interest. So again, this is just another way of looking at the net present values. As opposed to earlier, we calculate the net future values. So let's summarise. So net present value makes an allowance for the opportunity cost of investing. Certainly the later that you find the inflows of money coming, the more penalty we'll have for those. If you found a project actually received its largest cash inflows at the end, we're actually going to make a penalty for those. We want our money sooner rather than later so we can actually do something with it. Net present value is is good in terms of it takes into account the time of cash inflow and outflow. 
and looks at the duration of the project, so whether it comes in year one, two, three, four, or five in this example. It also gives us a definitive result. If the result we get at the end our net present value is above zero, then actually the investment's worth doing. However, if it's below zero, it's a negative answer, it's not. Do bear in mind this doesn't take into account any of the qualitative factors. There may be reasons, even if it is negative, that we'd need to do it. It may mean the knock-on effect will be a larger negative in future years. Disadvantages? Well, actually, choosing discount rates is particularly difficult. We've said 10%, but how do we know it's going to be 10% for five years? Bank rates move around. Reality businesses do employ accountants, and they do take into account for different rates at different points. The image on the right I've given you is actually the Bank of England interest rates over well, actually quite a short period of time, 22 years. You can see just how dramatic they are. Projects may take longer than five years, and so realistically, how difficult would it actually be to calculate this? Net present value is also reasonably complicated to calculate, and it can be misunderstood. Payback tells you very quickly how quickly you'll get an investment back, and it gives you the years and months that show that. Our average rate of return gives us the percentage return on our investment for each year. The value that net present value gives us sometimes can be misleading a negative, a positive, and how big it is. So sometimes it might be harder to actually look at, and again, the calculation in an exam, and certainly how accurate our figures are, could be an issue. So that's net present value.